Almighty Father, we worship and reference you. We magnify you because of the success, the prosperity you have granted to us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, you want us to overcome sin and to live to please you. So Lord, today we pray, as we learn from you, you will teach us your wish to live above sin, even as we prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the good health. Thank you for the excellent spiritual and physical health. And Lord, as we go into your word, teach us more. Explain to us how we shall prosper in this journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic today is prosperity. Hallelujah. Prosperity. It's good to prosper. It's good to do well. It's good to function well. It's good to take advantage of the word of God, the truth, righteousness, and prosper while we're on the narrow way. Let's look at 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved. I want us to look at the word beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as the soul prospered. Very important. Look at the wish of the Spirit of God for us. As he was writing to the well, well beloved Gaius, those who have well beloved, we have explained, those who are actually know Christ, who are in Christ, who are resident in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that saved them, said, Beloved, I wish above all things, more than anything, I wish. When you wish, you support it with what? With prayer, communicating to God. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosperity. That is complete prosperity. And God will grant to us in Jesus' name. Three points we want to look at as God is addressing us, as God is talking to us, as God is including us in the list of those who will prosper in this life and life to come. Point number one is price for complete prosperity by the Savior. No Savior, no salvation. No Savior, no success. I mean success that is actually permanent, that is eternal. Without Jesus, without the Savior, without the Messiah Christ, there's no way one can have prosperity that is of eternal impact. Now, point number two is prayer and consecration to prosper and succeed. You cannot just wish. When you wish, you wash and pray. Point number three is panting Christian, longing Christian, hungry Christian, desire, thirsting Christian. Hung, panting Christian will purify soul. Blessed are the pure in heart. They're going to see good. They're going to see God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Now, let's start from point number one. The price for complete prosperity by the Savior. Can we read again for 3 John chapter 1, verse 2? Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospered. That beloved comes from somewhere. There's a price paid before you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at John 3, 16. Price for the complete prosperity. Price for complete prosperity by the Savior. Let's see John 3.16. Let's see together. Open. I know you are familiar with it, but it's still good to open to see, to actually demonstrate the power of actually uh, following and fulfilling our righteousness. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. That's actually, no one is not debatable. God loved the world. That is, he, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That means the price has been paid by Jesus. God sent his son to actually demonstrate his love. The Bible says, Why were ye sinner? Christ died for the ungodly. So if any of us believe and come to Jesus, we'll be able to be saved. But how do you now get it? You need to believe. And when you demonstrate the belief, you confess your sins and you actually repent and renounce and restitute and come to the presence of the Lord and live a life that is pleasant to his glory. That's what you can do. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Can we look at James chapter 2? Because everybody say, I believe. I believe. Oh, if you believe, there are things, there are prices. Jesus paid it. 
in all, but me and you, I need to surrender totally and live that life. Look at what the Bible even gave us an explanation. James chapter 2, verse 19 to 21. Let's read together and have understanding. Allow the Holy Spirit to interpret to us with the mind that is straight, that is sincere, that is heavenly, towards heaven, not the mind that is only sensual and worldly and earthly. Lift up your faith, lift up your mind to say, Jesus, teach me, train me. So that I will not look for just ordinary prosperity that end there, not the success that end in the world. He says in that place, enjoy James chapter 2 from verse 19 to 21. Thou believest that there is one God. You believe there is God in heaven that sent his son that came to the world to die for our sin. You believe that, right? He said, thou doest well. It's good. Hallelujah. That's very wonderful. He said, uh, the, the devil also believe. Uh -huh. We need to pay attention. The devil also believe. Not only that, and tremble. So it doesn't mean because you start shouting and making noise that you believe in God, you believe in this. That's not all. You need to do beyond that. It now says verse 20. But with but will thou know, O vain man? Are you a vain man? If you are a vain man, you are not living for Christ. You are not living for because the vanity that you are take you to hell. But when you are a vain man, you are like that. You are in the carnality. You are sold on that thing. And you are living in the midst of unrighteousness. And the lips is not touched by the power of the God. He said, oh vain man, that that faith, that faith without works is dead. You said, you have faith. Faith. And look at your life. Look at your lifestyle. Look at the way you are, your motive, your friend, your groupings, your association. You are dead. You need to come out of those places, all those one, all those attitudes, all those lifestyle, all those with a premonition that is not godly. You need to come out and the Lord will actually take you out if you are willing. Not just believing and tremble like the devil, but you need to take steps to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. I mean ultimate salvation. I mean the salvation that is actually satisfied in heaven so that prosperity that lasts will be yours. Because what shall it profit you? You gain the world, you shout Jesus, you talk Jesus, you say you know Jesus, but sin is not left out. Or rather it's not out of the place. Your life is not different from people that have even said they are worldly. So what is the difference? Today, you need it. You need Christ for you to actually... Utilize the opportunity of the price paid through his blood so that you'll be able to live a life that is heavenly. Verse 21 says, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? You see, he did his own. He moved here. He did all. He, he didn't just live like other people. Even when Lot was calling, he said, No, no fighting, no striving. Let's, let's just take one, I will take after you. He preferred for him to take and follow. Even when God told him, Live your kindred, leave your people, go to a land I will show unto you. This Mesopotamia, this cardinal of all, will not profit you. Come out and go to a land I will show you. He obeyed. That's walking. That's walk. He left the place. You need to make up your mind to live sin and righteousness, to live holiness, friend of the world, so that you come to Christ and live that life. Said, was not Abraham a father justified by work when he had offered Isaac? He did something. He paid a price. He offered Isaac. He, in his heart, he offered, but God helped him. God knows he's a woman being. He didn't allow us. That's why you should allow faith to work for, faith to work for you so that in your life, you make up your mind. You, you have intention to do all the will of God. He will help you. Abraham make up his mind to keep the commandment, to keep the law, to keep the will of God, which is go and sacrifice the only son as he, and he made up his mind to do it. That's work. And he said, his son upon the altar. He didn't hide it. He didn't say, no, I won't do it. I can't do it. Only my son did do it. He didn't complain. You are complaining about your hidden sin. Complain about your shortcoming. Complain about the way you live your life. You don't want to leave the world at all. You want to have one hand in Jesus and on one hand on the enemy. It won't work. You need to walk out of the of the sin. Walk out of the system of, of evil. Walk out of darkness to light. And the Lord will help you and he will count that faith for, for righteousness for you in Jesus' name. You will not walk in vain. You will not do it in vain. Don't be vain, man. Come out of vanity and come to Jesus Christ so that the violent will take it by force. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's look at point number two, prayer and consecration to prosper and succeed. Hallelujah. You don't just say that you are you will succeed, you will succeed, and then all you look for is just uh, sit down there. No, let's look at it. And John, third John chapter 1, 
Verse 2, beloved. Are you not beloved? Are you not, you are not taken out of sin and you are in Christ by actually, you are washed and clean, confessed and repent and allow Jesus Christ to redeem you. Now you are beloved. I wish above all things. This is the wish. He's talking about, when we talk about the wish here, it's stronger than just mere wish. Prayer. Pleading. Intersection. Pray, 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 supplicating. He said in that place, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health as thy do, as thy soul prosper. That's why we are looking at prayer and consecration to prosper and succeed. If you will succeed, of course, in the spiritual, you give your life, you pray for sanctification, Holy Spirit come, but you need to move on, continue in the world, study the world, evangelize, be in the group of holy people, not just church member, holy people, righteous people, people that fear God, be in their midst. Then you need to continue to pray. Men always ought to pray and not to fear. Pray without ceasing. We need to pray. Watch and pray because prayer is the key. Without prayer, what can one achieve? You need prayer. And the Lord will help us. That's why we are starting with Prayer and consecration to prosper and succeed. Even in this life, if you will succeed, you will pray. Not only prayer, you consecrate. You separate yourself. You be hard working. You go there. You use the knowledge, the, the knowledge God has given you to prosper because it's the God that actually teach you. It's the Lord that actually give you wisdom to make weight. It's the Lord that actually teach your hand to succeed, to make what God teach you. So go out there and lay your hand on the plow and don't look back. And actually, if you know that you want to succeed, you will actually, in, uh, in the time of harvest, you will not fold your hand. You will plant and you will reap. You will not just sit down there. Others are going out. They are studying. They are increasing things and you are sitting down there. Even as a minister of God, you can't stand, you can't sit at the same spot on the same, no, 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 no. You need to move further. You need to upgrade yourself. You don't sit down there and say, ah, no, let me tell you, it doesn't just fall like that. You pray and rain come. You pray for success. Even when rain is raining, you put your pocket there and you actually get it. And look at the pipe water that's coming out. They make pipe. They actually dam something and make pipe and it's coming out. Consecration. Live, live your life. Lift your life above a slack person, a sluggard person, a lazy person. Don't just wish. So you pray consecrate and you prosper and succeed. Let's see an example of somebody that actually did not just sit down there, did not just lazy loud. Despite the, the, the minors, the bot in his life, he said, no, this bot, the negative will turn into positive. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will help us with the negative that people have, um, that have actually, they symbolize us with, they know us with. Even they said, Simon, uh, Simon the leper, today, whatever, even, even on you, God will remove them in Jesus' name. Blind Bartimaeus is sore because he cried out to God and God helped him. Look at First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. I read from verse 10. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. And Jabez call on the, on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not give me. And God granted him that which he requested. God will grant, grant you your request when you pray. That man went apart. He set himself apart. He knows his problem, but he wants blessing. He wants prosperity. He wants to succeed. So he prayed and God granted. I pray today. God will grant you prosperity. God will make you to succeed in Jesus' name. But don't forget Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteous name, all that thing shall be added. You know, as it shall be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Today, success, prosperity begin in your life. And you will live in good health. Don't forget that one. It's good to be in health. We are health and you do not eat bad things. You are not eat junk food. You are not actually association with those who are drinking and smoking and doing evil and doing all worldliness. Then you come to Christ. You are not fornicating so that you will not have evil disease. Then you will be in sound health. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's look at number three, panting Christian with purified soul. No purified soul, you won't get to heaven. Blessed are the pure heart, 
they will see God. Your soul purified, your body system sanctified, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Look at it in First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. Open the Bible, First Thessalonians chapter five, and in verse twenty-three. Are you there with me? Let's read together. This is the final place we are saying to pray. Open the Bible. Thank you so much. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-two. Uh, are you there? Verse twenty-three. There. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. And the very God of peace is a God of peace who sent Jesus, the Prince of Peace, sanctify you wholly. Complete sanctification, complete purity, complete prosperity, complete success. Who sanctify you wholly? And I pray God. Pray again. I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord. Jesus, are you ready, willing, that your soul and body will preserve blameless? Let us pray that God, O oh Lord, touch me. O oh Lord, help me. I want to prosper spiritually, physically, materially, O oh Lord. And I want to be in heaven. When you come, I want to go with you. Father, Lord Jesus, I pray for purification, sanctification, and that my O oh Lord, I'll be presented blameless when you come. A church without spot and wrinkles. Pray to the Lord if you are not saved. Pray for salvation. If you are saved, sanctification. If you are sanctified, Holy Spirit baptism. And God to live a life of prosperity. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because we are prosperous. We shall not go back. We shall make it to heaven in the end. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.